So, what did you get up to for Halloween? Welcome to Sculpture Studios, where here you can take your pumpkin carving effort and stick it right up your ghostly... But unknowingly, I think we might have actually been setting a new world record here. No, I'm serious. We've been in contact with Paulton's Park once again, and have been commissioned by James Mancy from Peppa Pig World. Naturally, this project's for Halloween, and along with a giant spider, where you'll be able to find the link to that video in the description below once it's uploaded to the channel, we're creating these sculptures larger than life. The inspiration is taken directly from the children's television cartoon, and in this project video, we're creating a pumpkin 3.5 metres long by about 2.5 metres tall. Between ourselves and the client, we've shared some rough mock-up images with dimensions, as this is going to have a greenhouse frame installed around the outside of the veg itself. Starting with the usual hot wires to cut the polystyrene down to size, we're stacking everything up and using a polyurethane expanding foam to join everything together. Hot wires are then used once more to take all of the rough, hard edges off of the shape. Now, you're going to be seeing a surprising amount of orange t-shirts in this video as well, which is actually just pure coincidence. It must be the time of year or something. You like this bit? Well, come over here. And here's what I've done earlier. Yeah, like that. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> Not a lot. Some must have fell off for a <laughs> Yeah, don't worry, I have no idea what Aidan was trying to say there either. The metalwork's being created by Martin at Fine Limit Welding. Obviously, we have to make sure the measurements are accurate to what we've made, so there isn't too much that needs to be amended when it comes to putting the frame around the pumpkin. Well, I said, are you carving a pumpkin this Halloween, Aidan? That's not quite what I had in mind, you know what I mean? Yeah, do you, uh, do you think it's spooktacular? <laughs> spooktacular, very yeah, good. Yeah, very nice. On with the nail and wire brushes now, and I think Aidan's trying to get a sentence out without corpsing. Ah, <laughs> corpsing, very appropriate. Just the start of the pumpkin. Here we go. That was it. That was all he had to say. Oh, it's a good thing he's good at carving, isn't it? See where this sculpture stemmed from. Ooh, very good. You're the pumpkin. The pumpkin? Jessica, and she's cracked on with this mould making so quick, we didn't even have time to get the camera out. So you've created this from polystyrene, all these different leaves, three different sizes. Created a glass fibre mould by going over 
polystyrene and protecting it, then a gel coat layer, then a fiberglass layer, and presumably got him with a nice green gel coat, chop strand so the fiberglass has something to key onto, and then a nice strong build up of fiberglass in order to pop the casts out. So here we are, the pumpkin surrounded by the greenhouse for the first time, just taking some images for the clients and see if they're happy with the fact that the stalk at the moment is on track to burst out through the top of the greenhouse. It's not too much of an issue at this stage, it's simply dogged in place and if they, they'd like it to be tucked in this could be amended but I think it's quite nice the fact it's kind of bursting through the roof almost. So we're just going to test out putting the roof on just to take another shot to send to them and see how it looks. Here we have the pumpkin as it stands. We've already done the majority of the carving, but they've requested a bit more bulbous on the top, so it's a little bit more irregular and uh, organic is the word. Here we go. So we've added a five inch slice between here to make the top feel a little, a little bit more, is it undulated? Um, yeah, looking really, really good. We say that was an easy thing to do, but it never is a quick fix. Uh, it's going to take a few hours to get that back in. Uh, and looking really nice, so we'll send the clients some more finish, finish shots. Um, hopefully they'll approve it and then we can get on with the fiberglass in and the finished result. I think we find our viewers enjoy the carving processes most of all, as well as all the silly dancing of course, but this is also the most enjoyable part of the majority of projects for Aiden as well. I wonder what he's thinking about when he's doing all that carving, you know what I mean? Right, so we've just realised that we've trapped Jess inside the middle of the job, so we're going to have to jeopardise the project just to get her out. If I don't know where she is, so if she's not in there, then we've we've majorly ruined this. Jet, oh thank God, you're all right. For you, is it? Come on, come on. All right, start again, start again. So for this project, as this is going outside, the finished sculpture will be created from glass fibre. First of all, this means the polystyrene needs to be protected, so the resin doesn't just melt straight through the material. We also want to be able to remove the polystyrene from the inside afterwards, as we want to reduce any unnecessary weight, and even though this is only polystyrene or styrofoam, the sheer size and scale results in being quite heavy. Removing the inside will make it far easier to manoeuvre around the studio, load and unload onto the lorry, and it also makes it easier for James's installation team at the other end. For this, we're going over with a wallpaper paste mix, by which we can apply a very thin, almost candy wrapper silver foil, and this will allow the polystyrene to be able to release a little easier from the fibreglass later on. As we're removing the poly from the inside, this means we'll make sure the fiberglass is built up in a nice sturdy layer. So what's going on here, Jess? We are currently glue gunning this big pumpkin together using lava and hot glue. 
Once this has been tacked in place, this is then going to be raised up so that somebody can get inside. And this eliminates having to have another trap door with seam lines that we'll need to make up better later. And when we laminate them from the inside, this will save a lot more on the cleaning up than if we were to laminate on the outside, where we'd have another strip of glass fibre, which we'd then need to lose the lines in the, in the gel coat finish afterwards. We're temporarily raising the pumpkin a foot or so off of the ground to allow us to get on the inside and join the two halves together. Keeping everything at this low level means we don't need to get ladders inside and people on the exterior can still work on the surface at the same time. What are we up to Liam? Sanding down the pumpkin. So, trying to get it smooth as smooth as we can at this point, uh, filling up all the gaps to make sure it's really sort of symmetrical, there aren't any dips and things like that. Covering it with a gel coat slash blue coat so it's much smoother, and then we're going to go over with the pigment colour, the actual base colour afterwards. Yeah, it just takes a, it's quite a long job, isn't it? Yeah, a long, a long time, like. Obviously working this close you see all the dips and the small like imperfections but because it's going to be seen from a bit more of a distance you need to step back and just have a look at the whole process so, uh, so any major parts that you can see like here that'll be covered but other smaller parts you can leave out. Yeah. Alright, carry on soldier. Will do. Have a little dance. Very nice Ruth, very nice, thank you very much. We're going over the metalwork with a red oxide and a green hammerite paint. This not only protects the steel from the elements being outside, but also doubles up as the greenhouse artwork as well. The pumpkin is being treated with its first proper layer of flow coat for the base coat of the artwork, and we're building this up in several layers to improve the overall surface finish and provide a nice solid base colour. So here we have Aiden going over with a second layer of the orange gel coats. Can you just uh, talk us through the artwork process that's coming up, Aidan? Basically, once this gel coat has gone off and we've sanded down the actual surface of it, we're going to give a slightly um, shadowing effect within here to give a little more, more depth to the highlights. Um, still keep it to the cartoon as much as we can, and that, but this will give a nice full bulbous effect to the whole thing. And then the greenhouse goes around it. Should look very good spoke to the clients and said do you want us to follow the exact reference image that we were sent which had very very solid almost pencil like lines but uh, I think everyone was in agreement to, to give this a much more 3D effect uh, Aiden's airbrush should uh, look much more effective To save room on the lorry when transporting the sculpture, we're going to have both the pumpkin and the greenhouse joined as one unit. We have still work that's going to run underneath the entire form that will be able to support the entire weight of the pumpkin when the greenhouse is lifted. It's now time to get this aloft so we can fit everything together. Now I'm not actually sure how these vegetable competitions work, I'm pretty sure they judge it based on the weight of the pumpkin as opposed to the size, but either way I think we're going to win hands down. It's up. Magic. Magic pumpkin. The space around the pumpkin on the floor is being traced out, and this way a metal grid section can be cut to 
to allow us to secure the leaves permanently around the base. Metal rods have been installed to the back of each leaf, and these can then be welded to the grid section. Beginning the artwork on the leaves, we're going over with a layer of a self-etching primer to key into the fiberglass and the resin. We then proceed with car body paints for a strong durable finish for outside use. Now, come on, you can't tell me that's not satisfying. Look at that. For the vines to go along with the leaves around the base, we've searched high and low to source an appropriate thickness and an appropriate flexible piping or hose, and this is being painted to fit in with the rest of the greenery. And oh, what do we have here? Finished pumpkin and a finished spider. If you want to see how that one's made, have a little look through our channel and see if there's a cheeky spider video being uploaded yet. Off to Peppa Pig World now, down towards Southampton and Paulton's Park. Another great installation for a great client, and hopefully there's plenty more where that came from. We'd like to thank James Mancy for approaching us with a project that's, quite frankly, right up our street. Oversized props are always fun items to make, and it's fantastic to see it finished out on location. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter. And for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching. So go on, Aidan, where's that Guinness book? I want to check on that world record. What world record? Yeah, you know, the pumpkin. I'm, really? I'm serious. No, it can't be. It can, it's a pumpkin, isn't it? You carved it by hand. Well, yeah, no, but it can't. It looks like a pumpkin.